أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Our respected viewers, brothers and sisters, wherever you may be Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Inshallah in this uh, session we will uh, recap on some of the important points that was mentioned in the annual sermon delivered by His Eminence Ayatollah al Uthma Sayyid Sadiq al Husseini al Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. In the gathering of the Mawakib and the honorable individuals who gathered in His Holy Eminence's house on the day of the martyrdom of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his holy progeny. His eminence started by paying his condolences to the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib al-Asr was the man. May Allah hasten his reappearance on the occasion of the martyrdom of his grandfather, the Holy Prophet of Islam, the greatest man whoever walked on the planet and also to some narrations the martyrdom of al Imam al-Hasan al-Mushtaba salawatullahi alayhi and also the martyrdom and passing away of our eighth Imam Imam Ali ibn Musa Rida may Allah peace and blessings be upon them all and his eminence prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to quicken the reappearance of the awaited Imam and Savior and which as a result inshallah he will take the lost rights of the oppressed men and women on the face of this earth. His eminence continued in taking a portion or a caption from the very famous sermon delivered by Lady Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her and her father and her family, where his evidence said that Lady Fatima, in one location in her sermon, she concentrated on the following phrase, and that phrase was, and that is, that with the martyrdom and the shahada and the passing away of my father Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam all hopes had died away and his eminence continued in explaining what that meant that meant that when the holy prophet of Islam was martyred was poisoned and departed from this world soon after the rights of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, his righteous, his rightful successor had been confiscated and stolen. And that was the Khilafah, the leadership, the Imamat. And as a result of that, the people of this world from the beginning of time until now and until the Judgment Day will suffer and have suffered and will continue suffering because that source of blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had been taken away from them. If Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib still had his position and his rights given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and people had acknowledged that and continued obeying his Imamat and his leadership that people would have benefited from the blessings of the heavens and the earth, from the skies and from the ground. They would have taken the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His eminence continued in saying that I would like to thank all of those individuals who contributed towards the upholding of the ritual of Arba'een, the visitation of Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the 40th the 40 days of passing away from the martyrdom of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. And he thanked every single individual who played a role in making that ziyarah a success. 
and prayed for their continuous opportunities to serve Imam Hussein alayhi salam and this noble cause. And his eminence continued in saying, people should know that whomever in the events of Arba'een and in the pilgrimage of Arba'een and in the ritual of Arba'een, whomever played a bigger role, whomever contributed in a bigger way, they will no doubt the, have a bigger share of receiving Allah's blessings and bounties and rewards. It's a shame that there were individuals who were able to provide more, serve more, help and support the cause of the visitation of Arba'een in a better way, but they did not. They neglected. His Eminence wanted to convey that there were individuals who were able to provide and sustain and support the visitors of the grave of Abi Abdullah al Hussein in the event of Arba'een, but they shied away for some reason. They did not execute that power that they had to the best of their abilities, and that is a shame. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the power and the ability to serve Abi Abdullah al Hussein. So we must do our best in every single way we can. His Eminence, Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al Hussein al Shirazi, thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this year once again the pilgrims and the visitors of the grave of Abdullah al Hussein at the time of Arba'een were all supported in one way or another. They were all looked after in one way or another. But he continued in saying that there still remains grounds and areas and corners where services and supports are still needed. He continued in saying that there might be individuals, young men and women, who would say that our services or our supports are not of that high quantity or quality. We don't have the means to support Ayatollah Shirazi continued in saying that every single individual, every single young man and woman is able to support the cause of Arba'een, the cause of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, even by encouraging, by speaking, by pushing people who have wealth, who have power, who have every kind of support and service that people can benefit from. They can encourage them to provide that service to the visitors of Abi Abdullah al Hussein at the time of Arba'een. Ayatollah says Sadiq al Hussein al Shirazi continues in saying that it was one of the traditions and the very well known practices of the Holy Prophet of Islam is that he used to borrow, take a loan, financial loan, he used to borrow money from individuals in order to provide a service to those in need. There were people who were poor, there were people who were in need of shelter, there were people who were in need of, of help, of medical help, of food, of clothing, of any type of support and service. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam, the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he used to go and take a loan under his name in order for him to pay and support financially those who were in need. And that is in a time where he used to need to borrow a second time in order for him to repay or return that debt or that loan. Ayatollah Shirazi says that this is one of the forgotten traditions and practices that has died away. People need to support the cause of Ahlul Bayt. The people of the world need to understand that even if it means for you to go and take a loan, borrow money to support and to propagate the teachings 
at the message of the Holy Prophet of Islam and his holy progeny, then so be it. Because this is a tradition, a sunnah. We have learned and we have received from the Holy Prophet of Islam. It doesn't harm you if you borrow money in the name of the Holy Prophet, in the name of Islam, support the cause of Islam, the cause of Ahlul Bayt, and you can eventually repay or return that loan. The next point that Ayatollah Shirazi concentrated on and mentioned was that today the percentage of the propagation of deviation from the path of Ahlul Bayt, propagation of corruption, propagation of evilness is higher than the available propagation of the message of the Holy Prophet of Islam and Ahlul Bayt And this is at a time where all the means of propagation is available. Maybe in the past, in the distant history, the means and the tools and the services of propagation were not widely available. People were not able to reach those sources of propagation like the media, like the technology, like the publications. But today, there is no excuse, brothers and sisters. Why should the propagation of deviation and corruption and misguidance be higher in percentage than the propagation of the real message of Islam? the real ethics of Islam, the real morals of the Holy Prophet of Islam. There is no excuse where everything is widely available today. Why should there be a fewer number of channels than the channels used to deviate and corrupt people's mind and pulls them towards corruption and disobedience? We need to work more. We need to do our best to support all of those communities and all of those organizations who have provided these services for us. Those channels, those media organizations, those individuals who work and provide a service in the different areas of propagation, whether it was media or the other types of propagation. The next point, Ayatollah Shirazi conveyed in his sermon was that Islam and its practices does not rely on certain individuals or certain movements or certain man-made cultures. But if you wanted to find out the real message of Islam and the real culture of Islam and the real tradition of Islam and the real practices of Islam, we need to go back and look at the life of the Holy Prophet of Islam, the way the Holy Prophet used to live. Today people, unfortunately, all over the world, they take their lifestyles from certain individuals whom they themselves lack knowledge and intelligence. Unfortunately, Instead of going back to the lifestyle and to the traditions of Ahlul Bayt salam, to the teachings of the, whole, of the Holy Prophet of Islam, to the way Amir al muminin the commander of the believers, Ali ibn Abi Talib, implemented and practiced those teachings from the Holy Prophet. People go and look at those individuals whom we have around us today, all of these streams of deviation and disobedience. People take those individuals as role models. But instead of taking Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, Lady Fatima, his daughter, his grandchildren, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, his cousin, Amir al muminin we take the, those individuals as role models. Unfortunately, we are going left, right and center and taking other individuals as role models. One example we can take from the Holy Prophet's life is the example of forgiveness. On many occasions, throughout the life of the Holy Prophet of Islam, there were individuals or there were groups or there were movements who came and 
disrespected the Holy Prophet of Islam. Those movements may have been political movements, they may have been other movements pushed by worldly desires, but how did the Holy Prophet of Islam react towards those individuals and those movements? The Holy Prophet of Islam, at one time he was one of the strongest leaders present on the plains of the Arabian Peninsula. But how did the Holy Prophet of Islam react towards those individuals who tried to neglect the right of the position and the respect that is due to the Holy Prophet of Islam? Not only because he was the leader of a government, he was the leader of a community, of a society, but as a prophet of Allah, as a messenger of Allah upon the people of this earth, who came striving to guide people towards the right path. The history of the Holy Prophet of Islam is widely available, brothers and sisters. Let's go back and research and read and investigate and study in a thorough way, in a thorough manner, the history of the Holy Prophet of Islam. Where would we find in any location in the history of the Holy Prophet of Islam a single individual who had died and passed away as a result of hunger? Show us, bring us in any location in the history of the government of the Holy Prophet of Islam that an, an individual, regardless of their religion, regardless of them being Muslim or non-Muslim, they spent the night until the morning with an empty stomach as a result of hunger and as a result of poverty. You will never be able to find in any part of the history of the Holy Prophet of such an example. There was Ayatollah, Say Sadiq al Hussein al Shirazi relates a story where he says 50 years ago an individual came to visit my late brother Ayatollah al Udma Sayyid Muhammad al Hussein al Shirazi. And this individual was asked by the late Ayatollah Shirazi the area or the location that you live in. Do you have a center? Do you own an Islamic center, a place where people come to listen and be educated in. That individual said, Oh Ayatollah Shirazi, that is costly. That needs a lot of money. <coughs> then Ayatollah Shirazi was seen and noted taking out a single 100 tumans 50 years ago that might have been some sort of position to that currency. Says Ayatollah Shirazi gave me that one single 100 tumans and gave it to me and said to me, go away to your city, to your area, to your village and start establishing a center for yourself and for your community. That man says, I looked around to the Holy Sayyid and I said, Oh Ayatollah, this is not enough. You expect me to open a center with 100 tumans? Ayatollah Shirazi says, Yes, I expect you to go take this 100 tumans with your encouragement to others, those around you in your community, your friends and family, go encourage them, speak to them, push them to help you and stand by your side. And this 100 Tumar will be the start of the establishment of this Islamic center. Ayatollah says Sadiq al-Shirazi continues to say that a few years back that same individual came to visit me and he related to me that story. <laughs> and he said to me, Oh Sayyid, we went back, we established a center which is worth millions in our day-to-day -day currency. It needs encouragement. It needs to take that one decision. It needs for you and your friends and family, your community to stand and make an oath towards Allah and Ahlul Bayt salam, to establish a project to propagate the message 
of Ahlul Bayt, the real message, the true message of Islam. The next point Ayatollah Shirazi conveyed in his sermon was that in today's world, unfortunately, our communities, our people, our friends and families need to be patient. Unfortunately, they are not being patient in terms of trials and tribulations and hardships they face during their life. One of the traditions of the Holy Prophet of Islam is that the Holy Prophet was known to be a patient individual in front of trials and tribulations and hardships of life. Today we see and we observe whether it's in our families or our friends or our wider circle in our communities, we see the sense of patience the sense of being an individual who stands fast in front of trials and tribulations has died away. Ayatollah Shirazi conveyed his sermon and concentrated on the fact that there are individuals who unfortunately are losing that sense of patience. Be patient. Rasulullah was patient when the infidels, the non-believers, attacked him, insulted him, abused him in every way. Rasulullah kept patient. As sabr. We need to be patient when we are faced with trials, tribulations, difficulties, hardships, problems. Because the only way we are going to be able to pass and get through these difficulties is only by patience. One example Ayatollah Shirazi gave in showing us the patience that Rasulullah exercised even at home with his wife or one of his wives was that one day one of his wives came and accused the Holy Prophet of Islam in, commit, in committing an adulterous act, Rasulullah being the Holy Prophet of Islam, being an individual who was the commander, who was the leader of the government, he was able to do whatever he wanted. But look at the behavior, look at the attitude, look at the patience of the Holy Prophet he practiced against or towards that wife. Let alone the Holy Prophet Listening to that false accusation, anyone other than the Holy Prophet of Islam would have lost their temper and could have done whatever they would be able to do against that person accusing them. Rasulullah did not speak a single negative word against that wife of his. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam did not physically chastise that wife. Not even that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam did not even imprison that wife. And he was able to do all of that. But he wanted to teach us a lesson. And that lesson is that anyone around you, coming to you, or speaking against you, accusing you with false accusations, then remember the patience of your Prophet, the Prophet of Islam. And this is an advice given to every single person living on the face of this earth. Be patient. At one time, at a time of anger, you take a decision, you commit an act, which later on you will say, I wish I had not committed that act. I wish I had not said that word. Because patience is going to be the key to the success of mankind on the face of this earth. The next point mentioned by Ayatollah Shirazi in his sermon was that today I advise our communities, our societies to uphold the unity, whether it was at home, 
to uphold the respect, to uphold the relationship, whether it was between the husband and the wife, or between the wife and the husband, between the parents and their children, between the brother and the sister, between friends, between communities, between governments and the nations to uphold their freedoms, to uphold their laws of relating to each other. If each individual upheld the law or the way that they need to respect the other, then our communities and societies will not be going through all of these social difficulties and social problems. Everyone should take the Holy Prophet of Islam as a role model. And when we take the Holy Prophet of Islam as a role model, we need to propagate his traditions, his lifestyle, his attitude, his morals, and until that becomes a norm, until that lifestyle and that moral or that tradition becomes a culture and every single individual practices that which will lead them to a better life to a better human life on the face of this earth today and throughout history if there is any sense of development and growth in the Islamic Ummah, in the Islamic nation. It's all with thanks to the Holy Prophet of Islam and his morals and his traditions. And these are the teachings that we received and humanity received as a result of the, the lifestyle of the Holy Prophet of Islam. It's as a result of the way the Holy Prophet of Islam lived with friends and with foes with his close relatives and with enemies, how he dealt with them, how he lived with them, how he looked after the friend and the corrupt individuals that used to live in the society around the Holy Prophet of Islam. There were many individuals who were described in the Holy Quran as being hypocrites. Many verses in the Holy Quran describes the activities that those hypocrites used to be active in against the Holy Prophet of Islam and against Islam as a whole. But when we study the life of the Holy Prophet of Islam, we come to understand how the Holy Prophet of Islam used to forgive them. At times, the Holy Prophet of Islam used to send gifts to them. And at times, those gifts were pricey gifts. One camel was known to be a very costly asset at the time of the Holy Prophet of Islam. But the Holy Prophet used to send to certain individuals hundreds and hundreds of camels just to show that he has forgiven them or just to show that he cares for their presence alongside the Holy Prophet. And that was all because of Islam, all because of the banner of Islam. We take these lessons from the Holy Prophet's life. The Holy Prophet requires us to execute our daily lives according to how he used to live. We have to all take a decision upon ourselves that we do not become amongst those who, God forbid, let down or failed the Holy Prophet of Islam. God forbid there are some individuals who take Islam as a religion or take the Holy Prophet as a role model for themselves, but only in certain ways, only in some places. And unfortunately, they will be the cause of letting down or failing the Holy Prophet of Islam. Brothers and sisters, we have to be careful that we do not fail the Holy Prophet as a result of our life and the way we live our life and the way we conduct our life, our behavior, our morals.
the way we strive to propagate the message of Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam. The propagation of the message of the Holy Prophet of Islam today lies upon us, every single man and woman, every single youth, every single young lady and young man should propagate the message of Ahlul Bayt. And if we can and we don't, unfortunately, or God forbid, we'll, we will be titled or we will be allocated with those individuals who let down and neglected and failed the rights of a Muslim, of a free thinker, of an intellectual individual towards the Holy Prophet of Islam. If a youth in a corner of this planet, in a corner of this world, has been deprived from the message of Ahlul Bayt, has not heard about the life of the Holy Prophet or has left or has been distanced from the path of Ahlul Bayt, from the message of Islam as a result of the practices of certain individuals acting in a different manner, in a different way in the name of Islam. It is our obligation, it is our duty to go and repair and fix that relationship and bring that young man and that young lady towards the message of Islam and towards the message of Ahlul Bayt Unfortunately, again, there are certain individuals who commit certain acts, commit certain behaviors in the name of Islam, in the name of the Holy Prophet, and the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, did not teach us to act in that way. It is our obligation as true followers of the message of Islam to correct people's way of thinking about Islam, to rectify how people look at Islam and the image of Islam, the image of the true Islam, it is our duty, it is our obligation, because the true message of Islam is the message of peace, is the message of human rights, is the message of freedom. And if there were individuals who tried to convey the message of Islam in a different manner, then know that these individuals are falsifying the message of Islam. They are conveying another way as they think, as they believe, as they like to understand, which has nothing to do with Islam. And in propagating the message of Ahlul Bayt, when it comes to attracting people towards the life of the Holy Prophet, towards the message of the Holy Prophet of Islam, we need to start from zero. We need to go back to the start line. We need to explain to people how life was in the Arabian Peninsula before and prior to the start of the work of the Holy Prophet of Islam, before the Holy Prophet was sent to prophethood, and how the Holy Prophet of Islam, with his presence, was able to change to the better the lives of those Arabians, where they were killing one another. They were looting each other's camps. They were killing each other. They were taking other camps and other tribes' women as hostages and as slaves. But the Holy Prophet of Islam came and cancelled out all of these practices. He cancelled out the fact that if a tribe or, or a family was granted with a newborn child and that newborn child was a female and they used to bury that female because they thought that this female is a sign of a shame. Rasulullah, one of the things that he cancelled out and he abolished was that act and that practice. So we have to convey that teaching, convey that lifestyle to the people of the world. And that needs us to start at zero. Go back to the start line. Explain everything to the people of the world from the beginning about the life of the Holy Prophet of Islam. The reason why governments and political organizations and countries around the world today 
on this planet are depriving their nation's rights, are going through all of these difficulties, are going through these mass corruptions, mass wars, is because all of these nations, all of these governments and political entities have not received the teachings of the Holy Prophet of Islam. If all of these governments, if all of these political entities had listened and had received and had been educated with the science of the morals and attributes of the Holy Prophet of Islam, you know that all of these governments and all of these nations would have now, today would have lived in the best of ways. But because the teachings of the Holy Prophet of Islam had not reached them or has not reached them or some individuals have twisted the teachings of Islam according to their own way of life, to, the, to their own way of thinking, then people have taken that negative look at the teachings of Islam. Whilst if we do our best to convey to every single individual, to every single organization and society about the true life of the Holy Prophet of Islam, you know that they will live the best of lives today. One fact that we can derive from the life of the Holy Prophet of Islam is that in the whole duration of the government of the Holy Prophet of Islam, in the duration of the whole life of the prophethood of the Holy Prophet of Islam, he did not have a single political person die as a result of their opinion, as a result of their ideology, as a result of their political stand against the Holy Prophet of Islam. Let alone that, the Holy Prophet of Islam did not even have a single political prisoner in his government during the, the, the reign of the Holy Prophet's government, during the duration of the Holy Prophet's life. There wasn't a single political prisoner in the government of the Holy Prophet of Islam. Rasulullah, the Holy Prophet of Islam, did not even have a prison in his government. But look at life today. Look at the governments today. Wherever you put your hand on the map of the globe today, you will find countries and big areas of land full of prisons, full of prisoners, full of political prisoners. You will find individuals dying every day as a result of their opinion about that political system. Today, how many youth, how many individuals do we have as a result of their political opinion? They come out to express their opinion of the way the government is treating them. And as a result of that opinion, and as a result of that expression, they are killed, they are murdered with cold blood. And no one comes to take the responsibility for that person's death. And all of these world organizations and these societies, they look, they observe, but they do not make a move. All of that is as a result of people not hearing the way the Holy Prophet of Islam used to treat political prisoners or used to treat political individuals. One other fact about the life of the Holy Prophet of Islam, which was the result of the nourishment of the, the Islamic government and the Islamic society and the Islamic nation at the time of the Holy Prophet of Islam, where you would not be able to find a single poor person or a single person who had slept a night as a result of hunger until the morning was because Rasulullah, the Holy Prophet of Islam, did never once in his lifetime sell a single plot of land to another individual. Why? Because the government does not own land. The land is not owned by specific groups of people for them to buy and sell as they please, as they like. Land has been put there, has been created by Allah, by our Lord, by our God. For it to be used by his 
servants by human beings. This land is free for whomever is able to use that land in a positive way to grow, to use in gardening, to use in agriculture, to use in building. Land is not for people to buy and sell, by governments to buy and sell those plots of land. You will never be able to find in the history of the Holy Prophet of Islam a single part of history where it shows that the Holy Prophet of Islam bought and sold plots of land because he used to rule that area. You will never be able to find. But today you will find governments and political entities and organizations. They put their hand on a specific plot of land and they buy and sell as if it is theirs, as if it is what they inherited from their previous generations. But in reality, it's not like that. No one came to this world owning a piece of land. We are all equal. We are all beings created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are all required to live side by side and to divide the benefits of this world, of this planet, equally between us, amongst each other. Ayatollah says Sadiq al-Shirazi, at the end of his sermon, he said in regards with the visitation of Abu Abdullah al Hussein at the time of Arba'een, there are two important points he wanted to mention. The first point was that the visitors, the pilgrims, of the grave of the holy Imam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam in the land of Karbala still are in need of shelter, of residence, of housing, of accommodation. There are still visitors of Abu Abdullah al Hussein at the time of Arba'een when they go to Karbala they sleep rough on the streets and the roads of Karbala. Today, it is our duty and our obligation and the duty and obligation of every single individual who is able to provide shelter or accommodation to the visitors of Abu Abdullah al-Hussein to do their best. Or at least to encourage those who are able to, to provide these means for the visitors of Abu Abdullah al-Hussein to be able to spend the hours and the days and the nights that they are in Karbala in the best of ways, in the best of honorable ways. And the second point in regards with the ziyarah, the visitation of Arba'een, was the transport. The fact that people still until today need to pay to reach Karbala. Ayatollah Shirazi concentrated on the point that no visitor of Abu Abdullah Hussein needs to pay anything for them to reach the land of Karbala. Transport needs to be provided free of charge, whether it was by road or by air or by sea. All of those means of transport needs to be provided for visitors to get to Karbala and for them to go back to their families and homeland. The rituals of Arba'een must grow bigger and better year by year. Some estimations, the number of visitors of Arba'een were 15 million or 20 million or whatever. Ayatollah say Sadiq al-Shirazi says there should be more services provided for the number of visitors to grow bigger and better. We need to do whatever we can to make the visitation of Arba'een of Imam Hussein alayhi salam bigger, better, more pleasant, more safer, more secure and easier for every person on the face of this earth to visit Abu Abdullah al Hussein, either at the time of Arba'een or before or after Arba'een. And that the last point mentioned by Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al Hussein al Shirazi in his sermon before he concluded was that this heat, this enthusiasm that Mu'mineen, Mu'minat, believers have carried over from the month of Muharram and Safar that needs to be protected, that needs to be looked after until 10 more months, until the arrival of the next Muharram, the arrival of the next Safar, which means that we need to continue striving and working hard 
to prepare people, to prepare ourselves, to prepare our services for the arrival of the next Muharram and the next Arba'een, to renew our oath of allegiance and to renew the Masa'im and the traditions and the lamentations and the tragedy of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. These were some of the important points mentioned and discussed in the sermon delivered by Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al Hussein Shirazi on the day of the martyrdom of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the success to work hard to propagate and to provide the service towards the propagation of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Peace be upon you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.